get to that window. Yeah, got it. Hold on, I can hear you. Mic check, mic check. Anybody that's on will be getting started in about two minutes. Checking the mic one more time, about one minute until we'll get started. All right, is everybody ready? We'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar at J. Turner Research, where our president, Joseph Batdorf, is going to take us through the key findings of our latest research on the mechanics of online review sites and ILSs in the multifamily industry. The results, as always, were fascinating, insightful, and on occasion, a little horrifying. We're going to dive into the market share of review sites and ILSs, what you didn't know about the methodology of major review sites and ILSs, some historical trends observed in analyzing the sites over the past five years, the impact of review gamification on monitoring and measuring online reputation, and the importance of review sites in a prospect's world. So we'll be sure to send out the recording after today's call so you can share it with your team, uh, as well as share the slides from today's webinar. Uh, and if you haven't already, you may also like to download the complete report available on jturnerresearch.com in the research section of the site. So if everybody's ready, here's Joseph. Thanks, Matt. We're uh, talking today from Houston, Texas, home of the division champs. So Boston, um, if there's anybody from Boston, close your ears on that. Um, but today we're going to be talking about uh, research around ratings and reviews in the apartment industry. You know that digital curb appeal matters or you wouldn't be on this call. Today we'll review the trends of the major review sites, review activity nationally, and hopefully provide you data that will help you form strategic decisions about your online reputation and marketing. Our research originates from our unique database monitoring over 67,000 properties nationally across all relevant review sites on a monthly basis. Data that Jay Turner Research has been tracking over the last six years. 
Some of this is going to be a lot of numbers, but we'll try to bring home what the strategic view for the apartment industry is for you. We're also going to review uh, studies that we've done on prospect behavior and the effects of ratings and reviews on their leasing decision. And here, what over 25,000 respondents had to say about online reviews. And like Matt said, uh, you can go to jturnerresearch.com and download on the research section uh, the white paper that, that we did. So there are over 4.7 million reviews on the internet, up 9% from last April, four months ago when we uh, presented this report at the National Apartment Association uh, in, uh, in uh, Atlanta. Since then, we're now up to 67,000 properties plus, which is a 5% increase uh, since, we, um, since we did the, the presentation then. And we're going to do some polls. The first poll here is how many multifamily reviews were added in August. Select one of the following. And so the numbers are up, obviously, from four months ago but we'd like to have you give us an idea of the, uh, the numbers that are being added. So let's go ahead and check out the results. And so 61% said 9,000. So let's move on with the poll responses and now we're taking a look at what the review volumes have been. The first quarter of 2016, there were 233,000. In the first quarter of this year, there was a 19% increase in those. Last quarter, there was 282,000, which is up 4,000 reviews in the quarter. And for those of you that answered over 150,000, you were right, 154,000. So the question is now, where do these come from? And you can see that uh, there were 154,000 in August over September, over uh, April. Google had 35% of those in August. They had 30% in, in April, so they're up 5%. Facebook went from 5% in April to 28%. The other kind of highlights on this uh, graph here are that Renner's voice had 4% with basically none in, uh, in April. And also Apartment Guide had a negative effect on uh, negative inter uh, reviews on the internet. The, um, the reason for this basically is, is that ILSs will, there's an ebb and flow to it. They'll add or subtract pro uh, properties that they're working with. Uh, this is a negative one. They, they've had positive ones. They'll probably have positive ones next month. I think they had positive ones last month. But in the month of August, they had a negative, um, a, a negative amount of reviews on the Internet. They took them off of review sites that no longer use or properties that no longer use them. So the takeaways on this, uh, Facebook really gained a lot. Runner's Voice did well, um, and, uh, and Google's still dominating in that, um, in that arena in regards to reviews being added. A property has reviews on 4.2 sites. So they may be on Google. They may be on apartment ratings. They're on an average of 4.2 sites. And um, there are 68.55 average reviews across the country, up from 72 in April. So basically, and nationally, we're adding a, a little less than two reviews per property. So if you are interested in increasing your online reputation, you need to obviously have good reviews. And if you want to outpace your competition, it needs to be more than two reviews. Per month. If you took out all the properties, believe it or not, there, are, there were 988 properties that had over 500 reviews. Uh, if you took out all of those properties, you would have an average of 64 reviews per property. 
There's a property called Fox Chase of Alexandria that actually is the most reviews of any property in the country with 3,937. They have 2,113 units. So our next poll question is, what are the three biggest review sites and ILSs based on the number of properties with a review? Now, market share can be measured in two ways. First is the number of properties that review sites are, are tracking, and also by the percentage of reviews compared to the total 4.7 million reviews that are on the internet. So let's take a look at what the responses were for uh, this poll question of the biggest review sites and ILSs. Google at 96, apartment ratings at 67, Facebook at 65, So you can see here, based on the number of properties with a review, that Google has 87, apartment ratings has 75% of the properties across the country, and Facebook has 61%. So you were correct. Apartments.com is unique in that their star rankings are established by a proprietary scoring system based on such things as amenities offers and offered and the date the building was built. Their star ranking system is independent of resident reviews, which is different than all other review sites. Apartments.com has star rankings on 95% of properties that J. Turner Research tracks, but have resident comments on 52% of those properties. The next slide shows you not only the percentage of properties there are at the top that, there, uh, that these review sites cover, but now what we're looking at is the percentage of reviews they have on the internet. Remember there's 4.7 million reviews. Apartment ratings has 40% of the reviews, of the total reviews on the internet. That's uh, almost as much as the top their, their next four competitors. In April, apartment ratings had 43% of the reviews, and Google had four, uh, and so they're down somewhat. Google is up to 17% from 14%. This gives you an idea of the market share of the properties uh, and, um, base, and also the number of reviews on the internet. This table here shows the range of reviews for properties across all properties around the country. 18% have between one and five reviews. 12% have between 101 and 200 reviews. And 11% have uh, zero reviews that we're tracking. So I want you to remember that you can download this, um, this PowerPoint right after the, um, uh, the presentation here, and you can go to the website to download the white paper. The next polling question, and you can, so you'll be able to review this table and, and all of them, but the question on, on, uh, for our next poll is, which site has the most average reviews per property? Which site has the most average reviews per property? And so um, we'll uh, let's see what the answers are. And Google comes up with 63% to show what uh, uh, ask on the question of what site has the most average reviews per property. And actually, let's take a look at this next table, and what we'll be able to see is that actually. Modern Message has the most reviews per property of 158, up from 109. Apartment Guide, Rent.com, Google's down to 14 or 15 per property in our latest research. You have to remember here that 78 is the average number of reviews per property. 
This table shows the average sentiment of properties of the 60,000 plus properties that have reviews of at least one review. You can see this This is a, um, a pretty nice uh, statistical uh, bell curve. 11% uh, have uh, less than a, a, a two star. For a two star, it's 41%. For a three star, it's 37%. And four to five is 12%. Four or higher is 12%. So now we're going to talk about sentiment by site. For rent has the highest sentiment by site. Sentiment by site is basically what their star rankings is. So for rent has a 4.5 star ranking on the average down slightly from four, uh, four months ago. And the, for rent basically uh, filters uh, reviews from uh, Google, Facebook, and Yelp. They take the best reviews from those sites and put them on their site. They attribute them to those sites, but they're taking the best reviews overall. So for rent, for example, Yelp might have a property that has a 3.2 rating, uh, but for rent would only take those reviews off of Yelp that um, are very positive. And that's why for rent will probably have the highest rankings um, always. Modern messages at 4.19, and you can go down the list and see where they stand with sentiment. Apartment Ratings is the only review site that has a percentage recommendation and that is on the average 49%. This is um, ratings analysis and, and this table indicates the average star rating versus the star ranking ratings of other review sites. C4 Rent for example, it has a 4.5 average rating on the properties they rank. Other sites that track the same properties that For Rent does has an average of 3.41. Why is this important? Well, it gives you an apples to apples comparison from a research perspective. For Rent ratings are skewed positively to other review sites on the same properties. For rent is 32% more positive than other sites ranking the same properties. For rent's a little like your grandmother, always saying good things about you. Regarding apartment ratings, the average rating is 2.98. It's skewed somewhat negatively, however, compared to the uh, rating sites that, com uh, that uh, are on the same properties that apartment ratings are it is 15% less. But let's take a look at the next table and see how that's changing. So you can see for rent, for example, and this is sentiment again, so it's the star rankings have come down somewhat. Most other review sites are pretty, uh, pretty level with apartments.com coming down somewhat. But here is, this is the interesting one, is apartment ratings uh, has come up significantly over the last four years from uh, less than two to uh, uh, just about to cross the, the three-point star ranking. It's up 8% from August, uh, from, uh, from the end of last year to August of this year. So, We've taken a look at the information and data that we've been gathering uh, on a monthly basis for the last six years. Now we're going to turn to um, we're going to turn to uh, our research on resident behaviors. We've done a number of surveys uh, on this, and the last the survey that we're talking about here had over 25,000 residents, 670 properties, and 10 different companies. So the first thing that we ask them is at what point do you utilize online ratings and reviews to gather information uh, about your apartment communities that you're interested in. 
62% said it was at the beginning of their search, up from 52% in 2015. This is an indication that prospects um, are going to do research before they even go out to visit your property. And so it, it drives home the point that uh, they're going to pass your property by if the properties that they're looking for that are competitors with yours uh, don't have strong online uh, reputations. Uh, so that's just another uh, important aspect of it being representing the curb appeal, uh, your digital curb appeal. Seventy-five percent of residents look at ratings and reviews multiple times in their apartment search. So even though 62 percent are doing it right off the bat, they're going to come back and look at it. We're not going to get into it today, but they're looking for different things in the reviews when they, uh, when they go back to visit. As they get closer to leasing the property, they're going to be looking for different things in the reviews. And this was interesting. We asked the question, the likelihood to, to, um, to rent an apartment community that is strongly recommended by a friend but has a negative online review. As you can see, that's a fairly moderate response, kind of lukewarm on a 10 to 1 scale. The inference here is that, the, uh, that online reviews may have more of an impact, especially if they're negative, uh, than even a friend. So we asked the question, how influential are the reviews on the following sources when they're looking at Google or Yelp or other traditional ILSs or review sites on a 10-point scale at 7.84. On property website, it's less, 6.22. And Facebook is 5.26. That, that may be increasing as Facebook starts to uh, get more reviews uh, as we've seen that they've done in the last four months, um, but at this point in time it's 5.24. So uh, we're going to go to uh, our third poll question, which is which are the top three most trusted sites by prospects in making a decision to lease at the property? So we, we did uh, this survey that asked people um, about what they would, who they would decide to go to. And you'll notice when we get to the next screen, not right this second, but when we get to the next screen, we'll show you that um, the ratings were the same, the number of reviews were the same. The only thing that really changed was the, um, uh, the brand name of the uh, ILS or the review site. And you can see here, Google was at 85 outnumbering everybody else. Apartment ratings was at 76 and Facebook was at 46. So let's go uh, to show what we actually showed on the um, uh, on the uh, survey itself. And as you can see again, the ratings were the same, the number of reviews, all we were looking for was the brand. So Google was number one, apartments.com was number two, and apartment ratings was number three. And so, the, and lastly, uh, and again, we really appreciate uh, everyone uh, being involved on this. Uh, there'll be uh, time for questions here. But uh, we asked the question, how important is the reputation of the management company in your decision to lease to the community? 8.1 out of 10. So it's important to prospects who the management company is. So just a couple of the key takeaways. Um, ILS and review sites landscape is dynamic and um, uh, the smaller players are, are gaining traction. Some ILSs have negative growth and Facebook has seen huge growth in, in, uh, in August. In regards to some ILSs have negative growth, sites can give it and sites can take it away. The top sites in terms of market share based on the number of properties are Google, apartment ratings, and Facebook. Review sites and ILSs reflect star rankings and review content, but in the case of one ILS, apartments.com in particular, the star ranking is independent of the review by a resident. 
Uh, gamification, review gamification impacts the volume and sentiment of reviews positively, not only in volume but in sentiment. And survey data feeds impact the, the volume, the feeds impact the volume of reviews positively as well. The top three sites with the most impact on the decision to rent are Google, Apartments.com, and Apartment Ratings. So the first question here from Alicia is, does J. Turner weight sites differently? Which holds the most weight? So I, I guess you're talking about the uh, measuring, uh, the, the measurement of Aura online reputation assessment that we have, which basically takes into effect the online, the reviews, the star rankings. It also takes into effect the market share of certain review sites. So the answer to that is, um, is yes, we do. The next question is, what was the property that had the most reviews for their property? But, um, Fox Chase in Alexandria, Virginia. And again, it had over 3,000 reviews. And what is the total number of properties with one review? And what is the total number of properties? The total number of properties that we are um, uh, tracking is 67,000. 333, I think, 399, and the total number of properties with one review, and again, you can go ahead and um, uh, download this PowerPoint to get it. We're going to go back and get this information for you. Is I think it's the next slide there. Well, between one and five is 18% of the um, reviews. And we're looking at uh, some more questions. What is Modern Message? It's a gamification company that basically um, provides uh, um, a system of engaging residents uh, for certain activities. Um, you can look them up on Google and, uh, and they can answer that better than I can. How do we get around issues with Yelp not counting certain reviews that we can verify our actual residents? Um, that's a good question. And uh, I think Yelp is going to have to help you out with that one. Uh, the, the, the whole philosophy behind Yelp's attitude in regards to that is that they want to make sure to get authentic reviews. And so um, they are very concerned about you know, what kinds of people or who are the people that are providing ratings and reviews, and they want to make sure that they're authentic, that they're not managers or management companies or whatever. So they've got some filters on that, um, uh, and and so there's some advantages and disadvantages to that. Yelp um, has been a very trusted site in the past. Uh, however, they're you know, very much involved in, you know, restaurant kind of reviews and so forth. So um, uh, the fact that Google has done so well is their uh, openness to getting reviews and so forth. So, um, you know, Yelp, that, that all I can tell you really is, is, the, is what the reasoning I, that I think that Yelp is doing that. So. How does the property respond to negative reviews impact future prospects reading of that negative review? That's a great question. Um, you know, when people are, are looking for an apartment uh, right off the bat and deciding whether they're going to visit a property, uh, they do a pretty cursory view uh, from our research of, uh, it's sort of like a Cliff's Note version they're going to look at the, the star rankings of, of all the sites that the, the, uh, of that property on Google. Uh, they're going to look at um, how many reviews are in there. And so will they dig down to read the content? Uh, not necessarily in the very beginning. Our research is showing that that's something that comes up later on. Um, but yeah, it, 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 once they get down to the nitty gritty of, hey, I've got three properties I'm going to look at, um, 
then uh, then they're going to uh, be looking at content more closely, and uh, and and it, and it will have an effect if if they're down to three properties and they're seeing some negative reviews, especially about issues that they're concerned about. Is you know if the, the playground's broken and they have children or you know, it's a place that has lots of parties and, the, and they, you know, have to be up at six in the morning. So, um, the, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the fact is that you can, uh, as they get along and closer to the decision-making process, content uh, becomes much more important to them. So the question is, what are my thoughts on reputation management sites? Um, the uh, the uh, uh, there are different sites that um, um, are uh, uh, there's good reputation management companies. I, I sort of have a bias about that, um, so I might not want to um, because you know J Turner Research does that. So um, I'll, I'll leave that to your uh, investigation of, of other sites, but um, you know, basically, the the the, the basic uh, reputation management company uh, will be providing alerts, will be providing uh, the ability to respond, um, and so uh, that that that's. That's basically it for the, the, the basic part, uh, uh, the basic aspects of uh, reputation dot, uh, management. So what topics do people comment on the most when writing a review? Um, uh, it's interesting. We just got, uh, we, we've just got a blog out on that that, uh, uh, that was written um, and uh, the number one comment was uh, actually uh, regarding um, race and discrimination, which I was really surprised at. Um, and so um, uh, there are uh, there are others out there, and um, uh, but that was that was number one. That was kind of disheartening, but um, uh, that was that was uh, you know. Obviously, safety, parking are, are big concerns. So um, we'll uh, get you the blog link and let you take a look at that um, as well. It was a well done article. Okay, and and, and then we're gonna we're gonna do two more questions. Um, what was the most surprising finding? Um, you know, to me, the most surprising finding was that um, uh, that Facebook has really picked it up in regards to the number of reviews. So they they would like to be in this space. Um, and I don't know. Uh, you know, Runner's voice coming on so strongly was also pretty surprising. Um, I, you know, they're they're obviously doing something you know, something right. Modern messages uh, big jump in the number of reviews. Uh, per property uh, was was pretty surprising. You know, we've been working on this thing for six years, and what uh, what we're really showing you is the trends, uh, the update of trends for the last four months. And so, uh, we expect to continue to to watch the trends and report back to you. You know, uh, these kinds of uh, of things. Um, and I think that you know it's important to keep an eye on s the smaller players. Everybody's, uh, I mean, uh, obviously focused on the big guys, but I think uh, uh, as well. I mean, there are. I think there's going to be some uh, other players coming on. When we started tracking uh, review sites uh, six years ago, we basically tracked 44,000 properties and two review sites: uh, apartment ratings and um, and Yelp. And so, it's it's changed dramatically now. There's 19 you know 19 sites, and I, I assume that that will continue to grow. So it's just going to be uh, it's going to be interesting keeping our eyes on that. So the last question is, 
uh, small property here, and Google has been our recent focus only at 12 reviews previously, now at 19. Since we do not advertise with ForRentOrApartments.com, I do not see us raking on those sites. I guess I don't see the question, so let's go to another question. <laughs> How can you positively influence your Aura scores is the last question. And, um, and that's Elisa again. She's been asking some good questions. Um, so uh, by, getting, uh, by getting four or five star rankings, um, by uh, responding to reviews, uh, by feeding reviews from your survey company to these sites, you know, or is established basically to look at the number of reviews and the, the, the rankings of those reviews on the major sites, and the major sites are going to change dynamically over over time. So, um, at the heart of it, and, and I believe this from the bottom of my heart, the bottom line is making sure that your residents are happy, that you're monitoring, that your residents are happy, uh, making sure that controlling what you can control, uh, because um, uh, that's at the end of the day what's going to um, what's going to affect not only your online reputation, but your length of stay uh, for residents, uh, word of mouth, which is 24% uh, of, of, of uh, the residents that move in uh, do it because of word of mouth. So at the end of the day, treating your residents well, um, making sure that you're doing that and working on the problems that they say that they're having. So uh, I'm getting in. So that's it. Um, really appreciate you being with us. Uh, you can go to our website at jturnerresearch.com, uh, get this downloaded. You can also get the PowerPoint after we're done here. Um, and if you have any questions that you would like me to answer besides what we've talked about, you can get in touch with me at research at jturnerresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.